friends, it's Miss Sebastian again. Today we're going to be learning about symmetry, radial symmetry, cathedrals, which are really big churches, and also the rose windows that had that special symmetry in them uh, known as radial symmetry. And then we're going to make our own version of a rose window with paper and markers and maybe a little bit of oil if you want to make yours kind of transparent and see-through. Uh, and then hang on tight for the end and I'll tell you some interesting facts about the medieval times. Today we're going to learn about what radio art is and in particular rose windows. So what does the word symmetry mean? You might know symmetry like in butterflies where you can divide it down the middle and have it be the same on both sides in a reflected kind of a way like in a mirror. That line, by the way, is called the line of symmetry. So if I have two images that are the same on both sides with the line down the middle, does it make it symmetrical? No, it has to be flipped over in order for it to be symmetrical. What is radial symmetry? It's a design that radiates out from a center point and has multiple lines of symmetry. Does a snowflake have symmetry where you can divide it down the middle and have it be reflected mirror opposites and have them be the same? Yeah. Does it have radial symmetry? Yes, it has many lines that can be divided down it and have it be symmetrical on both sides. Did you, do you know why each snowflake is different from every other snowflake that falls? It has to do with its journey down to the earth. So when the snowflake forms in the clouds, as it's buffeted, it hits other snowflakes on its way down to the ground and spins and twirls and freezes and unfreezes and freezes again until it makes the snowflake that we see as it reaches the earth. And that whole process makes each of them different. Does an orange sliced in half have radial symmetry? Yes, it does. Does a violin have radial symmetry? It doesn't have radial symmetry, but it does have symmetry with one line down the middle. Does a sunflower have radial symmetry? Yes, it does. What about this bicycle wheel? The lines are already practically drawn for you. Yes. Does this electrical transformer, when you look at the whole shape of it, have radial symmetry? No, it does not. But there could be smaller parts of it that might have radial symmetry inside of it. Does a starfish have radial symmetry? It does. How many lines of symmetry does it have? Count with me. One, two, three, four, and five. What other things have radial symmetry from real life? Think about what things you've seen, maybe some things in your house. Now we're going to talk about rose windows. The original round radial symmetrical windows were called wheel windows because they look like wagon wheels a little bit. These windows usually would have beautiful colored glass inserted into them. Today we call them rose windows because they kind of look like roses. This is the rose window from the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris, France. And you can see why they call it a rose window. Kind of looks like a rose opening up. This is from St. Joseph's Cathedral, Massachusetts, 1982. Here's what one of the windows looks like here. So even though the images are different going around the perimeter of the rose window, it still has many lines of symmetry and basically the shapes have remained the same, like the circles that are outlined in black. It wouldn't technically be truly radially symmetrical because those images in the circles are a little bit different. The daisy was used to signify the innocence and sweet simplicity of Mary. Here's another one from the Strasbourg Cathedral. This would be the initial plan for designing it. 
All right, things that you're gonna need for this assignment include something that's straight, like a ruler. You can also fold a piece of paper a couple times, get that straight edge and use that. Scissors, pencil, some markers, and if you wanna make it transparent at the end so you could put it up in a window and have the light really shine through it, you could have a little bit of cooking oil too. Uh, we'll talk about that near the end. First step that we're gonna need to do is we need to fold our paper in half twice. So try to line up those edges nice and straight. Fold it in half once, and then I'm going to fold it in half twice. Then we're gonna need to open it up one time. And what I'm gonna do now is that I wanna have an eight inch circle. Um, and if you have like a butter tub at home that has a big circular lid, you could use that just to trace. I don't, so I need to um, make a measurement here. So if you don't have a ruler, then on your little piece of paper that you may have that you're using to fold up for this assignment, um, you can actually just take that paper, line up here, line up here, and that's gonna be your ruler that you can use to do this next part where you can line it up and just mark the little dots. I'm gonna use a ruler because I have one. I want to do four inches, so I'm gonna just measure here near the middle, mark a little dot right here where the four is, and basically I am going to do that all the way around. So if this is where the crease is in the middle of my paper, you can see it here when I open it up. So this is the middle. Basically, I'm just lining up my ruler so that the number four long line touches that dot. And then I'm gonna put a series of little dots on from the end of my ruler going all the way around. So again, it's always the four inch mark, marking the end here. Or on that strip of paper, wherever the dot is that you made it. All right, so now I have a bunch of dots and my goal here is now is I'm gonna kind of play connect the dots just in that one quadrant, that one corner of the paper. And then I'm gonna fold it back up. And then I'm gonna just cut along that line. And hopefully now when we open it up, we will have something that looks like a nice circle. All right, next, we're gonna need to fold it in half again, fold it in half again, and then we're gonna fold it in half again, making sure that those lines are nice and crisp as best as you can get them, going to the middle. And then if you can fold it one more time, that would be so awesome. So this last time does take a little bit more effort. And that is not too bad there. So now I'm just gonna open this up. And you can see it's now divided into all these um, different sections of it. So next what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use my ruler. I could do this by hand, but I think it's gonna give me a more straight. And again, if you have a folded piece of paper um, that you're using, you could use that folded edge as your ruler too. So I'm gonna just draw the lines as they go through the middle and they follow that crease mark.
All right, so for our next part, um, I like to start in the middle because it's easier to get the shapes a little more close and same size. And then I kind of radiate outward from that. So I'm gonna just do a little curve here. And if I do one here, I'm gonna do one next to it, one next to it, next to it. Trying to keep them all the same distance if possible from the middle point. So next for the shapes that come out from it, I'm just gonna do whatever shapes I want, but keeping them all the same size and all the same design going around it. I do like to have a ring that's solid going around the outside edge. Um, I think that lends itself, especially when I color it black for the uh, rose window. And then I'm just gonna color whatever colors I want in the middle. get those outside edges to color in completely and you don't want to get them on the table or whatever else is underneath yours just get a scrap paper off to the side and then you can do that so if it goes on here it's not a big deal and if you want to use your black to outline your shapes or outline the lines in between to help give it a little bit more of that rose window look you're welcome to do so You don't have a black sharpie like I use to do the outlining you may want to do the black outlining part last or else the black may smear as you color it in all right for the next part um, I have some generic cooking oil here and I have a paper towel and I've put some scrap papers underneath because you don't want to get oil on whatever you're putting um, on because it will bleed through the paper and so I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on here and then I'm going to rub it around. I might need a little bit more. Because you just want to saturate that paper with it. 
And what it's going to do is it's going to help turn that paper transparent. And the reason why it is not um, smearing the color underneath it is because the markers are made of water-based materials and oil and water don't mix because the oil molecule um, is a lighter, fatter molecule and it doesn't like to mix with water. So you rub that around really good everywhere until the paper's all saturated and it will lend itself to a transparency kind of a thing. If you wanna flip it over and see, hey, did I get everywhere or did I miss some sections? Cause it'll look a little different when you've missed an area. You can go back into it and hit those areas so it'll definitely have that transparency that we want. Because you, when these are dry, you can get a piece of tape and tape it up in the window and the light shines through it so nicely. So that is our rose window assignment. I hope that you enjoy it. Um, I know I certainly have. I hope you enjoyed doing that project with me. And um, now on to our interesting little fact about the medieval times. I'll give you two. Uh, outside of London, England, the biggest cities in England during the medieval times were cathedral cities. And basically, this would be the cathedral in the middle of the town, and they may have other houses and buildings and businesses that will build out from around the cathedral. The last one is, is that apparently eels, you know, that fish that swims in the sea, could be used as currency. We have evidence from back then that um, parcels of land were sold for eels. Uh, one parcel of land actually went for 26,000 eels. So you had to pay that over before you could get your land. All right, I want everyone to remember to be kind to everyone you meet today, love on your family, and keep on making great art.